Number 36, apply the loop rule to loop blah in figure 21.52. So first check out um, number 31 and 32, where I went through a detailed analysis of the loop rule. And uh, this one I'm gonna go a little faster through, all right? So if you uh, you know needed to uh, explain maybe in a little more detail, check those out, okay? Um, all right, so we gotta apply loop rule. So we know loop rule says that the sum of all the potential rises minus the sum of all of the potential falls or drops will equal zero, okay? So all we're gonna do, we just gotta figure out what loop we're talking about and then we'll get to work. So it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, A. So it looks like we're going to start here and we're gonna go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, A. You thought I was gonna say K, didn't you? All right, didn't you? All right, uh, I'm not really sure what accent that was, but um, that's why I that's why I tutor and I don't uh, act. Anyway, um, okay, so we're at point A and we're gonna have to travel around that loop. Let me just uh, outline it again. So this is gonna be the loop going like this, and we're gonna use the currents that are already on the page. All right. So if you're traveling, uh, if the current says it's going up, and you're traveling with that current in your anal uh, when you're analyzing your loop that will represent a potential fall. Now remember Ohm's law, uh, V is equal to IR or VR, meaning the potential uh, drop across this resistor is gonna equal the current that's flowing through that resistor multiplied by that resistor's resistance. All right, so basically what we're gonna do to find the potential fall here, I would take the current I1 that's flowing through this and multiply it by the uh, resistance value of R1, all right? Now, since I am analyzing the loop in the same direction as the current is flowing, that is a potential fall. If it were opposite, if I were moving this way, in analyzing the loop and the, and the current was flowing up, then it would be a potential rise. Fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna put it in my category over here of potential falls. So that's going to be I1 times the resistance, right? I1, R1, and the R1 is, they gave it to us five. Now from here on out, I'm not gonna write it that way and then switch, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write five I1. Hopefully that makes sense because it's multiplication. So that takes care of that one. Now we're gonna to go to the next thing we see, another potential, oh, the battery, all right? Remember the bigger line here represents the positive terminal, the smaller line represents the negative. Anytime you're moving from negative to positive, right? Think about that, you're happy, right? If you're in a negative state and you go to a positive state, it makes you happy and or happier. And therefore, this potential that they gave us across that battery represents a potential rise. You're rising in your potential, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, well, it might make sense from, a, uh, from, an, from an analogical standpoint, but uh, analogical, is that even a word? I don't know. Yeah, that's why I stick to science. So um, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write that down for our potential rise, okay? So we're gonna write down 24 volts. All right, that's going to be in here, and as you can kind of see, maybe I'll create my two parentheses so you see the two categories here. Got a category there and a category there. Let's keep trucking. So we're moving around the loop, right? We're going do, 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 oh, oh, we got to a resistance, right? And uh, what's the current flowing through this? Well, it's like, oh wait, they didn't give it to us. Sure they did, they gave it to us. See I1, I1 is gonna travel this whole point until it reaches another junction. And here's the junction. Okay, so that whole part is gonna represent I1. And then notice down here, so I might as well just since I'm on the topic, see they gave you I3? So the, the only way this current I3 is pointing this way is if the current over here was going that way, and the only way the current over here is going that way is if the current over here is going that way, right? So in other words, they gave us the currents everywhere, they just didn't write it all out, all right? So this is I3. And then I2 would have been, as they told you, traveling this way. So now you can clearly see the currents all over. So maybe that's a good technique to kind of do, uh, maybe at the start even, make sure you know the direction of all the currents. Probably how I should have started it. But um, what are you gonna do? Yeah, better late than never. So uh, we're traveling, we're analyzing the loop in the same direction as the current is flowing, so therefore it's a potential fall. So what I'm now going to do is uh, I am then going to write down now the current of I1 multiplied by the resistance of 0.1. All right, so I'm gonna add it in here. Now you might be used to just, you might be saying, hey, wait, 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 my teacher taught me, you know, my professor taught me to put that in as a negative. 
And that, that is fine. That's not incorrect. What I'm doing here is, um, in terms of this formula, I'm just simply plugging in everything. I'm not even worrying about the signs at all. I don't. It's less thinking for me. If I memorize this formula, and I understand that the potential rises go here minus the potential falls, when I distribute this negative charge, it'll take care of itself. All right, everything will be then appropriately signed. Um, so for me, that's just easier. But if you just want to skip that and go right to the negatives, plugging them in, be my guest. But don't do both. All right, don't do both because otherwise, then it will be wrong. So plus 0.1 uh, times then the little R1, they, oh, what am I talking about? Times an I1, sorry, the current. I1, okay, great. And now we're gonna keep traveling, do to do, do. Okay, we get to another resistance. Uh, we are analyzing, traveling down, right, with the current. It's a potential fall. So that's then going to be, let's move this on over a little bit. So that is then going to be added to the potential falls category. Um, and it's going to be uh, 20 times I1. All right, great. So we keep going, do, do, do. Okay, now notice, right, we are still traveling in the direction of the current here because if you see the loop, right, down here, the current is flowing like this. Okay? So we're still traveling with the current, and therefore this potential represents a potential uh, uh, fall across that resistor. So we're still going to plug that into the potential fall category. And... Um, uh, what do we have? So that's a new current though. Careful. That's I3 now. So plus then 0 0.2, 0 0.2. That's the resistance times the current. That's Ohm's law times I3. Okay. And notice we get to a battery. Uh-oh. We're going from the long bar to the short bar, right? Long bar to the short bar. Mm. We're going from positive to negative. Oh, we're not too happy, right? Our potential is falling. So therefore this 36 will get plugged in now. They already gave us the potential. There's no Ohm's law to use. They gave it to the put you know, the potential is measured in voltage. And uh, I'm going to plug that in then with the potential falls. So simply just, you know, keep moving that bracket a little bit. Add in the uh, 36. That's it. All right, let's keep trucking. So we come around, do to do, up, oh, we get to another uh, resistance. We're still traveling with the current, so that's a potential fall. All right, so it's going to be 0 0.05 times the current of I3. All right, so let's keep moving this over. So plus uh, 0 0.05 times I3. Uh, three. Okay. And we still got to keep going and oh, 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 we come to a battery, right? We come to a potential difference and wait, oh yes, I'm going from a negative to a positive. Yes. Right. I am happier. All right. What did they tell us the potential is? That's a potential rise now of six volts. So I'm going to add that to this six volts. All right. And let's keep going. Maybe there's one more. Right, so we keep on trucking along, do do do. Uh, we get to another resistance. We're still traveling in the direction of the current, so it, it represents a potential fall. And now, just simply add that on into that category. So plus now, um, I uh, seventy eight times I times I three. All right, and finally now we keep traveling, do 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 do. Up, oh, we got back to our point. Done, done. Now simply close up your parentheses, make it look maybe a little neater, okay? And then just put it equal to zero. And this is this is the answer, okay? Now, if you wanted to distribute the negative, notice how each of these terms would become then negative, right? Negative, 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 negative. And that's might that might be the way that you were taught, okay? Just kind of plug everything in, don't worry about this formula, and just plug it all in, just plug in negatives here. That's fine. Just don't do both. Please don't plug in negative here uh, because I'm, I'm t essentially pulling that out. All right. And uh, pu putting the negative sign in front. So uh, don't do both. Don't do both. Don't do both. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. See you soon.